So today let's do a, something that's a little bit different. Um, I haven't actually really played much of Freeze Mage. I've seen plenty of it. There's been different variants of it going back. Multiple expansions. Hell, really, because of Ice Lance, you can make a case that this has always been at least hovering around the meta, if not atop the meta at certain points. Ice Lance, of course, moved out. It was put in the Hall of Fame, so it's no longer in Standard. And as a result, I know I read a lot of people at the beginning of the expansion who thought, well, maybe Freeze Mage is dead. Turns out, not really. I mean, one of its easiest ways of winning is gone, but at the same time, that's not necessarily a problem. So this is a little bit different than what you're going to see standardly, but what I mean by that is, like, uh, two-thirds of this builds itself, and then the rest of it is all kind of personal preference and or what you have. So most people would run two ice blocks. I don't have two ice blocks. I only have one, and it happens to be golden for whatever reason. Uh, so I'm only running the one, but... One of the new additions that helps a lot is the Arcanologist. It helps you guarantee that you get to your secrets. And because that's so good, it's already just a 2-3 for 2, which is good stats. But as pseudo card draw, well, actual card draw, uh, I've just put a mirror entity in instead of a second ice block. Thought about maybe two ice barriers, but eh, eh, this at least gives us some options to kind of control the board early in the game. Beyond that, this is all about delay and card draw. We have... Stuff that draws cards like Blood Mage Thanos, and we have two Loot Hoarders, and an Acolyte of Pain, which we can ping with our hero power, and we have two Arcane Intellects. So that's all, you know, fine and dandy. And then we're all about delaying. So we have stuff like Frost Nova Doomsayer. There's the Doomsayer. There's the Frost Nova. And we have Blizzard to do the same thing that Frost Nova does. And we're looking to clear sometimes. So we're running a Flame Strike. We can also use the blizzards for that effect. We also have two volcanic potions to help clear off the board, especially against more aggro-y decks. This, of course, pairs nicely with something like Blood Mage Thanos. Gives us three damage to all minions pretty quickly, so that's pretty good. And then in the end game, we're doing what Freeze Mages do, which is Alexstrasza, take them to 15. And then we use some combination of stuff to take that 15 health pretty quickly. So we got two Fireballs, got two Frost Bolts, got two Medivh's Valets, which is another reason why the secrets are important. It's why Ice Block in particular is important. It's why it's a shame I don't have two, because Ice Block just sits there the whole game, ideally. But that's okay. And then we have a Pyroblast, just in case. You know, things get a little wonky. You might want that big, beefy damage to be able to finish somebody off. And that's pretty much the whole deck. I only have one Primordial Glyph. I'd like to have two, but it is an epic, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's got the purple in the middle. So this is basically, like, really flexible really nice usually additional burn but you can use it for some other purposes and it essentially is free i know that there is some thought behind maybe running like archmage antonitis because of this because you essentially get two spells out of it and i might go to that just because i don't have a couple of these other cards that i might like to include but for now we're going to try this variant and see how it goes but i mean a lot of this again just kind of plays itself well not plays itself but like builds itself as far as the deck goes I mean, double double Frost Nova, double Doom, the two mana, three Freezy thing that I'm, name I'm blanking on, <laughs> double Fireball, Alex Strasse, like all these things are pretty much just Freeze Mage staples. And Mage has so many other good spells and other cards that float about that you can kind of play with that and tweak it to your liking. But the big thing is patience. We want to keep our health at a decent pace. We want to keep the board from being too overrun. So we can get to Alex Strassa, ideally on turn 9, but as soon as we can, and then go from there. Dr. Edmundo. An incredible discovery. So we've already got Ice Block in hand, that's good. Here's Ice Barrier to join the party. You kind of run three secrets here for the same reason that you ran three or more secrets with Mad Scientist, that you want to be able to pull them from your deck. If you only have two secrets and you draw the secrets early or whatever, then you lose some of the value in that. Um, I found it first. So we just kind of chill, 
There is really no pun intended there, but it happens anyways. Ideally, we want to keep the frost bolts to do burn, but we can use it if we need to. board's a tiny bit gross. Problem is, even if we kill the 3-3, we're only reducing our effective damage by one this turn. So, I think we just chillax. Now, most of the time, we're actually going to look to trade because we don't really care about their health when we're going to Alexstrasza it to 15 anyways. There can be exceptions to that, but... Yeah. Gross. Vomit noises with my mouth. <laughs> well, I think we know our turn 5 play. We don't really have a way to deal with this at the moment. So I think we're going to be greedy, not Frostbolt the 2-2. Two, two. Just use do? this turn to get this set up. That's a little weird. I don't really want to draw right now, though. That would take us to 10. Could loot Hoarder and Hero Power, but I'm not sure that accomplishes a whole lot. So Let's make sure we've got that ready to go. Because we're going to probably at least 12 this turn. Well, that's a little gross. But with that, that really helps. So now we're just going to do this. And that. And then when the 2-2s two pop out, guess what we have with 6 mana? Thirteen health, a little lower than we'd like to be at this stage, um, but we're about to get board control. He only has two cards in hand. All this stuff is immediately going to die. That's not bad. Turn, we're probably Acolyte of Pain paying Loot Hoardering. Let's just double check our cards here. I mean, it could cause us to mill, I suppose. So, like, we're going to draw to 8. We're going to play back down to 7. He'd have to... It'd be pretty specific to be able to... to I, I think we're all right. I mean, he could do it, but... That's fine. In theory, we should just go to 9 here and then draw our 10th card, but... If he really wants to hero power the Acolyte first, he can make this mill. We have Frost Nova Doomsayer again. That's good. Looking for that Alex Strasse. There it is right as I say it. So with that being the case, I guess we need to set up as best we can for next turn. Sometimes that actually means playing Doomsayer out, but with his board being as unthreatening as it is, I think we're just going to get greedy. We're going to do that. Do this. And even though this doesn't really matter, we're going to do that. I don't actually want the draws right now. That's why I'm not trying to ping and or trade with the Acolyte of Pain. I can see. Okay. We didn't even show him the scary part. <laughs> but he did kind of run out of steam. That that blizzard off the top was very good. In fact, we top decked very well that game. Got both Frost Nova Doomsayers in our hand. Got the blizzard off the top right when we needed it on turn six. And then pulled the Alexstrasza a turn before it could be played. So that was all... Of course, alternatively, if we had had, say, Fireball in hand, we could have dealt with that big minion. It would have popped out two little 1-1s. We wouldn't have cared as much, you know. Jaina versus Jaina. 
Arena. We have some flexibility with this deck. And it's just about trying to make sure you get the most out of everything you do. And go from there. This is not a terrible opening. I don't know what else I'd be mulliganing for. Look at the options we have at our disposal right now. Some removal, some draw. A nice body and a draw. See, so yeah, ideally I would have two ice blocks. Ideally I would have two primordial glyphs, but I don't. But I have two of these. I actually didn't have two of these. I had to craft them even though they're commons. That's the sad part. An incredible discovery. Hey, that's the one we want. Might just be playing that next turn. This is the other reason why Primordial Glyphs are good. They work with the quest for Mage. What do we got here? Mirror Image? Ah, that's good. That's a good one. Our turn is very straightforward. Now, we don't always have to rush to play this. Obviously, we're not in any danger right now, but... In this case, what else are we going to do? A loot Hoarder? Like, pfft. Do that this turn. Hero power. What to do? What to do? So the danger of facing this mage deck is of course when it completes the quest and it can time skip, we can die very quickly. Most versions of this run arcane giants. And so they just play a bunch of those because they've played a bunch of spells to satisfy the quest. Does that change what we're doing? I'm seeing Tark Reaper protect into a lot of decks now, which makes sense. It's a pain to deal with sometimes. Could save the Fireball and use Frostbolt to kill this instead. What to do? What to do? Let's do that. The old equation still holds true. Ideally, we have like two fireballs and a frostbolt. So the turn after Alex Drossa, that's 15 damage. But uh, we have some other ways to do it. Medivh's Valet does three damage as well. Also for two mana. I wonder. And there's always the less subtle approach of Pyroblast. That doesn't do 15, of course, but... It's also why the Primordial Glyphs are handy. Because of the cost reduction, you can play that on an earlier turn and then have, say, a two-mana Fireball. And that makes all the combinations super easy. Okay. I mean, if this is a Mirror Entity, that's not great, but that's okay. Nope. Getting our card drawn, though, which is good. It's going to be a weird matchup, and it's going to take a while because we're going to be up against a deck that's not going to play a ton of minions itself. We're going to see eventually the, what is it, the Cabal Courier, I think? The one that lets you discover a mage for whatever card. Yeah, Cabal's Tome, because we're not threatening him right now, so he has the time to do that. Take it slow. Well, we might as well get maximum value, right? Let's swing. So Ice Barrier, okay. Uh, eight cards in hand, so we really can't mill off of this. So, yeah. Ice Barrier is a little gross. 
about to go to 10 cards. Here we go. Join me on this journey. <laughs> there they are. The Medivh's valets are here. Uh, well, we obviously need to play at least one card out of our hand. Those Volcanic Potions are really not going to be much use to us in this matchup. And again, either are the two Blizzards or the Flame Strike. So right now, basically half our hand is dead. Excuse me, you are on fire. Okay. Excuse me, we can at least get rid of his armor this turn. Fire. Not necessarily thrilled to have to play both of those. I didn't have to. Could have played Thanos instead or something, but... We don't want him to have armor, that's one thing. This is a super controlly matchup. Now, the other problem we're going to face potentially here is Ice Block. Ours is up. He's probably got one, but has not played it yet. Saw an Ice Barrier. He could have two. I would imagine not, but could also have two Ice Blocks. But he shouldn't have much in the way of healing. So we're really going to be looking to draw Alex Strasser here in these I next couple turns. If we draw it this turn, we're going to be faced with a similar problem. We kind of have a an issue here where it's going to be like, what do we play? I think, because pretty much exactly what we talked about, that the play this turn is pretty straightforward. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. Now we don't. We had many ways to do that. We're primarily just doing that to get the card draw and to dump the volcanic potion that we're really not gonna use anyways. Because what's volcanic potion gonna do against arcane giants? Wouldn't mind finding a Doomsayer, too. It'd be nice to have one of those around so that we have it as an answer to whatever death is coming here. Uh, starting to go face. The pieces are getting close to being assembled. Now, what, is, what are we at here? Two? Three of six. Okay. Um, nine in hand. Arcane Inlet takes us to ten. Huh. That's interesting. I actually think we're just going to do that. I figured I would be primordial glyphing that turn, but turns out no. This is at least going to have to give him pause because it could be a counter spell in this mix. You can assume that one of those was an ice block, probably the first one I played, but... Even if you guess Ice Barrier on the second, what's the third? He had a potion of Polymorph, so I could have that too. It could be that weird, like, when your opponent plays a spell, get a copy for zero. I haven't really seen much of that being played, but... Who knows what I'm up to? Any of the minions that we copy at this point are potentially just funny. We've seen both Tar Creepers now. So what else could we catch? An Antonitis? A Giant? That's kind of the, the big dreams we have. That's not bad. Double Water Elemental. Okay, well. Let's put him on the clock, shall we? We found the Alexstrasza. We have an Ice Block up, and he's at 12, so let's see what he wants to do this turn. I would be stunned if we didn't see at least one secret come down. But that's why this play is so effective and why this deck has always been strong is because 
this puts you against the wall where you need to clear the Alexstrasza, or at least polymorph it or something, freeze, you know, whatever. And you also need to have the mana to play your secret. Now we've got 10 mana, so we should be able to do both, but... Good. More health. I think we're just going to Pyroblast this turn. Ice Block is still up. Time runs out on me. Take it into two. I don't know how he comes back from that, so... I suppose you can make a case for Primordial Glyph and hope to get Fireball. I guess that's probably a better play. Just because that way he doesn't have a chance to Ice Block. What else could do it then? I guess with the Arcane Intellect we could try to draw into something, but we don't have enough mana then. It has to be Fireball to have lethal that turn, I believe. I can't think of anything else that does enough damage in combination with only four mana. I wonder. It probably is a better play, though, just to have a shot at lethal right then, just to end the game. Time runs out on Still, his turn led me to believe he didn't have much in the way of answers. If he had had Ice Block, I would have expected to see it already, rather than him doing damage to our face. So I feel like we're fine no matter what. But I'm trying to think of optimal plays for the future. Yeah, no, he's in severe trouble. An incredible discovery. Why wouldn't you start with the Arcanologist unless you're not running Ice Block? I'll admit, I don't know what happened there. But, um, yeah. So just the one game of Freeze Maze, those games generally take a long time. But I guess we did two, didn't we? Yeah, because the other guy forfeited when he ran out of steam. So never mind. <laughs> I was just kidding about doing one. It's a longer video today. Why not? And then the rest of the week, I don't know. We're going to see what I end up playing. Look at all these dead decks. Those are sad. Wah, wah.